Happy on T Sport. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you with us. We're going to start at the very beginning. Your earliest memories of football. What are they? Um, yeah, I started when I was four uh, to touch uh, first time on the pitch of ball. Um, great memories because it was the first training session with my brother. So with that, he bring us to the pitch and. Um, yeah, the first session um, is always something you will never forget. Your parents obviously played a huge role, but life wasn't easy for them, was it, from a very young age? Can you tell me a little bit about their struggles? Absolutely right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my, my parents, um, they came from Kosovo before, uh, before the war um, to Switzerland without nothing, without mi minus of the money, for example. Um, they was uh, sleeping in one house, um, in a friend's house, uh, for maybe three, four, five, six months, until they got the first job, until they got a little bit of money where they can live alone. And um, but otherwise, my my dad, he was um, because of the politics, had to leave the country as well in Kosovo. So the time for them was, I think, very very hard. Not like ours now. Um, to start without nothing, to start without family, to start without sisters and brothers. I don't think so. This is easy. But yeah, they uh, they went through a lot of bad stuff, but as well good stuff. They make them strong. They make them strong with us after, and um, so happy to have them always behind us. So they made the decision to leave. Was the original aim to end up in Sweden, but they ended up in Switzerland. Yeah, it was a stop because they came with a bus. Um, the thing is that my parents, they came together, but they was not sitting together. Um, my mom, she was sitting in the back in the bus, and my dad in the front because of the politics stuff. They have always a chance to catch him again. So they didn't want to risk to take them both. And um, yeah, the stop was in Switzerland. My grandmother gave uh, my mom a, a letter, so there was a... Um, address to call someone, a friend of her, and she did that and from the day one they liked Switzerland, they liked the things around them and they stayed there. And that's where you were born and your brother as well, so born in Switzerland with Albanian heritage. What was this sense of a dual identity like if you were a dual nationality? If I'm honest, it's what, it was not always easy um, because I born in Switzerland, grew up in Switzerland, um, but I never forget where my parents come from. Um, we are from Kosovo. Um, very proud to be from Kosovo, very proud to be from Switzerland, uh, because Switzerland was a country that opened us everything. Uh, for my parents first, and after for myself and my brother. The school, the respect, the discipline they gave us is everything from this country. A um, little bit disappointed because a lot of people see us in a different eyes. One day you're Albanian, one day you're from Switzerland, and this is a little bit sad and disappointed, but this is part of life. Is it something you'll talk to your own children about? I mean, my own children, they have different um, backgrounds, no? Um, both of them born here in London. I met my wife in Germany. We are from Switzerland. We are both from Kosovo, so four different countries. But of course, the first language we speak is Albanian at home, and second is now English. Um, but we want them to teach as well German, so they grow up with three um, languages. But this is a mentality what we have in our family. We, we don't want to forget our um, blood, where we are from, and this is very important. I know you're very close to your brother, just 18 months apart. Your mum used to dress you the same. People would think you were twins. How close were you when you were growing up? Very, very close, uh, because we are only two of us, and um, he's um, 18 months older than me, but between us, I don't think so one paper can be between us because we are very, very close. Um, even when we are now both with kids, both married, both our own families. I speak with him maybe five, six, seven times on FaceTime a day because this is how, how we are between each other. Not only about our professional like footballer, but as well in other stuff of, of life. And yeah, it's very important um, talent for, for me. You played at Basel together. How much did you push each other? Were you competitive with each other? Did you motivate each other? Of course. <clears throat> For him, it uh, was a little bit a disappointed time because he was not playing a lot. Um, the thing is that we are playing in a uh, position, in the same position, and 
Um, he was not playing a lot, so he was not so happy. Um, but like a younger brother, it's always more difficult to push the older bro brother and to help him. But he's a, he's a guy, he listens a lot. And um, yeah, something what we dream to be back one day, hopefully. And, but we are still a little bit too far to do that. Was football a huge part of your identity when you were growing up? For sure, but if I'm honest, um, both of us, we started football only not to go in the wrong way. Um, this was uh, the first objective for my parents. So to have the discipline, to have the respect between each other and um, to enjoy and to have fun. I think not the parents of us, but as well not ourselves. We went with this mentality to say, OK, one day we are sitting here and we are speaking about professional football. This was not the key. The key was only to have fun and not to go in the wrong way. Just to go back to those Basel days, at 15, you suffered an awful ACL injury. Do you remember that time? What was it like for you? I remember very good because um, it was a friendly game and I got injured um, in the first half. I felt very good, um, but after shower, my knee was swelling a lot. It was a time where the winter came as well. Um, the time where I believe between 15 and 18, you can see a little bit of the way if you go like a professional or you stay in, a, in amateur football. But in the other way was the best thing what can happen for myself because I started to grow up in a different way, um, much more focus, much more discipline and I take it very, very positive this, this part of my life. Despite that injury as well, you made it to the Under-17 World Cup, you won it with Switzerland. What was that like thinking you may not have even been playing there, you scored in the group stage game as well against Japan. What was that experience like for you? You need luck in life, this is what I think. Um, I never, I never been um, a player in the national team from Switzerland in the under or something. Um, this period was like one player was injured um, in my generation and um, they took me. But I had a feeling they took me only for the training 11 against 11 to play. But I knew this is the biggest chance what I have. And I showed myself in the preseason, I had a very good preseason, I had a very good tournament. And after this, everything went up. Um, straight to the first team with Thorsten Fink, was my first coach from Basel. He gave me the chance to train with the first team. First team. He gave me the chance to, to be part of the first team. And um, yeah, the Under-17 World Cup opened me very, very much the doors. You moved on to Borussia Mönchengladbach. What was that like, leaving your brother behind, going to a new city? Was it a difficult time for you an ex or an exciting time for you? It was maybe one of the most difficult times for our family. Um, I am the youngest in our family and we had a very, very good conversation what, what I want to do or what we do. Um, to leave uh, my parents, my brother behind to move to Germany was a big step for me. I was um, nearly 19 when I did uh, the step and um, I didn't want to do it first because I didn't want them to let them in Switzerland and me to move to Germany. So I decided to take one of my parents. Um, they were split in a short time for two years because I had always one with me. Who um, came with you? My dad came first with me. How did you decide that? Who came with you? Uh, because I, I was not ready to leave alone. Um, I needed one of them to be with me. Um, it was a good decision because I had not a good time in the beginning in Germany. So what we did is the first two years, um, or nearly three years, my dad was with me. And after that, we changed because I said to my dad and to my mom, listen, I can't see you both, one in Germany, one in Switzerland. Let's keep you guys in uh, Switzerland and let me do it first alone in Germany. And then I met my wife. Uh, it was much, much, much easier for my parents, but as well for me. And um, yeah, everything in the end went went good and I was very happy, I had an amazing time in Germany. How much did it help having your dad with you, the time when you were on the bench a lot, when maybe you might have considered walking away? Did your dad play a big role in keeping you there? Absolutely, I mean, my mom, she's a little bit more soft, um, like every mom, I think. Uh, my, my, my dad is more stronger, what's, what's part of, of our job. Um, 
I played the first game, the five game. I didn't play well. Um, I was too exciting to to do this to, to do this journey and. Um, yeah, he dropped me. He dropped me on the bench. He dropped me on the, not in the squad. And in January, I wanted to leave after six months. And I can remember like was today. My dad told, told me, if you run away, you will always run away. So keep fo focus, uh, keep working, and you get the chance. So what I did, um, I stayed there. Um, I trained hard in the preseason because we have a break in winter in Germany. And after that, everything went how I wanted. So. After that, after one year, I went the captain uh, for this football club, Mönchengladbach. And something you makes me very proud because you see the beginning, you see the end, and you see today how good I am with them makes you very proud uh, because everything went how I wanted and it was a good step. Your dad gave you that advice to stay, but I guess you had to find something from within as well, that inner strength. Did you learn a lot about yourself at the time? I didn't have another solution uh, because I speak with my dad very open and um, I listen to him a lot. He was right what he was saying because I was thinking in this moment when I moved to Germany, I'm the best. I wanted to do everything. I spoke a lot. I didn't work enough. And my dad saw that. I didn't see that in this moment because the adrenaline was a lot there. But thanks God you have someone behind you who helps you, who bring you back in the reality. And he did.